Texas A&M 10, Colorado 7. And the biggest thing to take away from this game is Haynes King went down with an injury early early in the game, and I think it shell-shocked the Aggies. Uh, well, it didn't just shell-shock them. You could tell, A, Haynes King is a first-year starter. They were replacing Kellen Mond, who was there for like nine years. So you know anybody behind King is super green and really not prepared. Yeah. And as soon as he went down, I thought A&M might lose that game. Uh, Zach Calzada is the guy that, that was coming in, and he was neck and neck with King in the off season to to win the job, right? And, That's right. But they're both they're both super inexperienced. But, but he was also not prepared for this game whatsoever, right? He did not no, take the first team reps. So eighteen no. out of thirty eight, one hundred eighty three yards, one touchdown for him. He was not terrible, but no. And this was um, this was a little a little scary that Colorado was able to hang with a And M. If I am. If I'm an A and M fan, I'm kind of worried about this, right? I, I would. You have the right to be worried. I also thought some fluky things happened, like they got the ball in the end zone or to like the one or two yard lines multiple times, and then the worst, the worst rule in sports happened twice yeah. to them. Yeah, that, there's nothing you can do about that. Okay, because because if you if you just chalk both of those up to field goals, that this is this is a different football game. Yeah, you know they, what I'm saying? You win by two scores. Like, yeah, it, it, when you're in, and you don't know what happens from there because now Colorado is down by two scores, and so you your defense might get a pick, it might get a fumble, you get them to make a mistake because they're making press, you know, they're pressing. Just a lot of things can happen to change the outlook of the game. And uh, I think the biggest thing that I'm that I'm worried you about can't predict that. Like if I'm an A and M fan, what I'm worried is we were not able to run the football. No, they weren't able to 20, run. The Twenty nine carries for ninety seven yards. That's three point three per carry. Uh, I mean, what do you, what do you even do with that? Like they they ran Isaiah Spiller eight times. Like I think he, something happened with him. Calzada ran seven times, twenty eight yards, and then Devin Achani, if I'm saying that name right, you guys correct me in the in the chat if I'm not. But he ran nine times for fifty yards. Like he had a a pretty good average, five point six per carry. But they they couldn't really do anything. Like That's offensively, right. they just they completely shut down when when King went out and. I mean, they got they got a long way to go, man, because they they got some tough games on the schedule. Like it's, it, I know New Mexico is next week, and then they've got Arkansas the week after that. And you do not want to go into that Arkansas game looking like you did against Colorado. So, oh no, no, I think I think man, I think Arkansas is legit. Yeah. I really do think they're really good. So post game win expectancy, yeah. Texas A and M was sixty percent. They had five scoring opportunities to Colorado's three, and they were able to put up you know more points. So is what it is with that one. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.